Alright, another video. Sorry about that, but I uh, happen to be in the mood, so we're stuck with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, Beardy Man, the modern mystic, made a movie, little short video, two minutes, uh, called something Making Movies or something. And he uses an analogy that um, somebody shows up at a movie set, starts critiquing everybody, um, and uh, pointing out how they're doing their thing wrong. And they just say, well, it's what the director told me to do. I, it's determinism. I'm determined to do it this way. And um, then somebody comes up to him, the guy complaining and says, uh, why are you complaining? Because you're a pain in the ass. Shut up. Or something like that, whatever. And um, <clears throat> that's his determinism, is to complain about the complainer. Um, and that somehow determinism is the only thing that we can see. And we can see more than that. And so I'll use something less, I'll, u I'll just use the way we use language. And so let's break down the two judgments. So let's call all our behavior a judgment of some kind, a form of, of mathematics even. Um, you add up and you come up with the right answer in terms of what your behavior should be. Do you um, do the risk analysis, you do the um, computation that gives you your answer. And those answers are going to be completely dependent on how you value things. So that's sort of what I said in the other video was if you don't value the welfare of feeling uh, pigs, let's say, then you don't mind eating bacon in the morning. Because you don't place any value on the torment that the pig has endured for the benefit of your consumption. Um, but if you value suffering, um, torment, anguish in a mammal, um, then, yeah, you're going to say, why am I doing that? Um, is myself, is the comfort I'm deriving so necessary? Do I really have to do that? Can I find something else to eat? Um, you start finding, you, your judgment is find something better to do if you can. Find a way out, because it doesn't look right. 2 plus 2 isn't equaling 4. Somehow you're coming up with the wrong answer. Somehow you're saying it's okay to torture things when you know it's not okay. So the answer is wrong, and you look at the math you did to figure out how you got the wrong answer. That kind of thing. Um, so judgments are all determined. What you'll calculate is determined. What you understand 2 to be and 3 to be and whether they can equal 5 depends on whether you've been had the experiences necessary to know how much a 2 is and know how much a 3 is. That's the only way you can add them up right is what facts you're deal, dealing with. So again, if your fact base says um, the future is not important, uh, the now is more important because the now is now, and now is very nowy, and therefore now must be more important because it's so now. <laughs> you know, you just can't ignore the nowness of now, so therefore now is more important. Well, I'd argue that that logic is stupid, um, convenient, <laughs> contrived, um, nonsensical. I'd label it wrong, done poorly. And that's all we're talking about is appropriate labels. Labeling things that are stupid, stupid, and labeling things that are smart, smart. And there's some kind of claim in the air, not, not explicitly stated, that there is no distinction between smart and stupid. There's no distinction between good acts and bad acts. But the only thing that matters is how the person acting, whether he felt good doing it, or whether it was uh, satisfactory mathematics to him personally. And that's not the only thing that's real here. And it's clearly a real phenomenon that people can explain to other people bad math. They can demonstrate it to them and then make them do the same thing they did, which is recalculate and say, yeah, there is something wrong with my math. Because I, I'm not on the pro-torture team. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think torture is a good idea. So it's wrong. If, if, if you see me doing something that's torturing things, yeah, let me know, because I'm not for torture. I'm, I'm against it. And uh, so I'm miscalculating. 
and it would make sense for somebody to walk up to me and point out how I've done bad math. And it would make sense for people who call themselves philosophers um, to point out the, the understanding they've gleaned through their effort to understand, to gain information, to access facts, and be able to figure out how you can make the mistake. You know, that somehow the two can be a little drawn funny, it can look like a three in your head, and no, no, it's a two. <laughs> you know, you just got it wrong. You, you got fooled because the pig is ugly and he doesn't speak English. Uh, you know, you're just fooled by that. He's, he's not as smart as you, and therefore you, you, you got fooled into thinking his feelings aren't real. So it was just a stupid calculation you did. You made a misjudgment. And the word should is completely viable and completely compatible with determinism. Because it's part of the determinism is learning. Part of the determinism is being educated. Part of the determinism is seeing the writing on the wall. Part of the determinism is enlightenment and... Um, even reprogramming. It's all part of the determinism. And the, it, it's, it is part of the determinism that people would be smart enough to realize you can't let broken things continue to do broken things and expect the world not to be full of brokenness. So you have to fix them. You have to fix the bad math. You have to fix the poor calculations. It's only logical. So he wishes to, through determinism, to equalize all judgment into the same thing, as if it isn't distinguishable by the fact that it's supposed to be within the realm of reasonable. Our judgments are supposed to be within the realm of reasonable. And when somebody's doing something overtly unreasonable, that is, you can point to the mathematics that does not add up. And this is basic math. There's no Latin symbols in this at all. <laughs> you know, it really is two plus two simple. And that's what makes the conversation even more inane and frustrating to have, is why should I have to argue about two plus two math and the fact that we can identify it and say, there's no excuse for it. It should not exist. There should not be a human being who can't add 2 plus 2 and come up with 4. And they're making excuses for them coming up with 5 and saying it's determinism. No, it's, it's worse than determinism. It's stupidity. It's belligerence. It's retardation. It's delusional nonsense. It's anti-intelligent. It's describable as asshole. It's describable as jackass. It's describable as fucktard. It's, it has, it means a lot more than just being determinism. That's, that's not the answer. That's not the correct way to describe it. It's describable in much more detail in terms of the causes for the effect. The cause isn't determinism. The cause is stupidity. Grotesque, obnoxious hypocrisies. Insane duplicity, an inability to recognize it, uh, you know, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. you know, what, that's too complex? We can't have that as a minimum expectation? That anyone who's violating that rule, we can declare a duplicitous cunt? Bullshit. Determinism doesn't mean anything in the context of identifying what we're living with or among. We can identify asshole and call it asshole. And quit playing this silly game that somehow determinism, determinism means it's not an asshole. Of course it's an asshole. Of course it's broken. It can't calculate two fucking plus two. It doesn't belong on the, on the counter for sale. It's, it's broken merchandise. It, it's a bad blueprint. It should be crumpled up and thrown in the wastebasket. It shouldn't be validated and replicated. It's a piece of shit. And that could be stated. It's, it's an obligation to state it. It's an obligation to fix it. There's nothing, there's no way to avoid the 2 plus 2 math of the idea that you fix it. You don't just leave the spilt milk on the fucking floor. You don't leave the broken in place.
Um, so this is an inane conversation that this, you know, I'm going to use the word determinism to escape um, judgment. When the judgments, yes, every judgment is determined. You will, you will do bad math if you're a shitty calculator. And it's just as determined that the good calculators can sit there and say, Jack, God damn, what a shitty calculator. It's just putting a bunch of noise in our system. It's just creating a bunch of, of, of nonsense numbers. It's not doing any calculating. It's not doing any reasoning. It's not obeying any of the logical rules. It's fucked. It's a piece of garbage. And that can be stated. And he considers anyone who does state it some sort of yob by his judgment. See, that's how he thinks. He thinks it's a, a great rudeness um, <laughs> to point out um, fundamental catastrophic errors in basic function. Because he thinks the only function that's a legitimate function uh, is eating, shitting, pissing, puking. That's it. You don't have any obligation to do anything else. 100, neuro 100 billion neurons? Fuck them. They're of no meaning or value. Because they're not there to do rational calculations. They're not there to combine facts. And he'll do this, this duplicity of his, in, in the sense that he's using this analogy that, um, you know, you have to be careful how you do your math in the sense of where, you know, having conversation that you have to keep the axioms, you know, the premises, determinism. You have to keep track of those little digits while you have a conversation about something else just to make sure you don't violate the rule of determinism by using some word that's verboten now. Somehow you can't say uh, it could have been different if the determinism was different. If you changed the circumstance, if you made them capable of adding 2 plus 2, it would be a different world. Yes, that's obvious. Nothing wrong with saying that. If they weren't broken calculators, they could have gotten the right answer. It's a valid word. And the more important word, should, is, is perfectly acceptable. It doesn't violate determinism to say it should have been, okay, because there's no excuse for it being that broken. The brokenness was identifiable. It's like being in the flood zone. It's, it's, it's like rebuilding New Orleans. It should have occurred to someone to think maybe this isn't the place to invest in. Maybe if we're going to invest billions of dollars, we should invest billions of dollars in a location that's going to be viable. That's not going to just turn the money into shit. You know, a, a location that's going out to sea. You know, it's not a good thing investing in Atlantis when it's already halfway, uh, you know, under the ocean. And it's rational to say, we shouldn't invest in that. They shouldn't have invested in that. It's perfectly rational to say those things, to recognize why there was a failure, because they couldn't do a simple calculation. And the context of this conversation is criminals and other menaces to civilization um, commit their acts not because they're determined to be something. It's because they were made to be something by a bunch of people who didn't pay any attention, who didn't recognize the threat, who didn't see in the child something you need to invest in, something you need to constantly keep from being seduced by the dark side. You know, you had to do your Yoda thing. You had to do your, uh, whatever his name was, the, the spiritual guy. Uh, you know, what the hell was his name? Uh, the robe guy. Anyway, um, what was a stupid name. Ben, Ben, Ben Picatonia. <laughs> what the hell was his name? Ben... Never to be a Ben something something Ben silly silly fucking name. But anyway, um, yeah, they have to pr they have to push. You know, they they have to state look out for the dark side, look out for the stupidity, look out for the shortcut, look out for the bad judgment, look out for the I didn't think long enough, look out for the my special interest completely biased to my opinion. I, I would turn into a, a silly bigot 
you know, based on the fact that I had too small a penis or some other bullshit. Look out for the things that are going to fuck your judgment, turn you into an asshole and an idiot. Your brain can do that, and they'll do that because you were inspired to do that, because there was enough Yodas and other shit, um, you know, towing the line and getting you to be part of it, uh, to recognize the importance of it. And that just didn't happen for these assholes of the world. These assholes who grew up uh, bitter and and nasty <laughs> and, uh, you know, just just can't see past what's in it for them. That's negative, stupid, idiotic. And here you are, some kind of intelligent person basically just saying that. Just Just sit there and, you know, measure what your biology says is your need and go take it. Because, yeah, your nature is not going to make you a nice person. I don't know, maybe he thinks it works that way. He has some genetic code, you know, that uh, makes him unrapey, <laughs> you know, untakey, unexploity. Makes him some sort of loving and gentle character. Um, but I think anybody who can do the rational math knows that's not your nature. That's not how you're born into this world. You're not some kind of generous little monster. You're a selfish fuck. And the only thing that gives you any kind of dignity or hope is knowledge of that fact. That you you are um, a piece of garbage. And the only thing that uh, grants you potential is the fact that that garbage can be molded um, by people with character into something that can do something grand. Grand. I think that was one of the words, the stupid rye guy didn't care for. No explanation of why the word grand was <laughs> so obnoxious. Uh, the whole book was idiotic. I mean, you go on and on. I mean, there's people defending it, so I, I mean, I almost feel like responding to some of that. So maybe I will, because it's just, it's a shitty piece of literature, just in the sense that it's just a stupid, it's a description of a desk. It's a description of somebody's living room. I mean, any idiot could sit there and just write a bunch of nonsense about the crap on the walls and make up a story about every painting and make up crap about every piece of dirt on the molding. I mean, that's not, that's, that's not a challenge. That, that's not writing... <laughs> you, know, you know, ironically, I think what the Out of Africa was one of the books he was reading. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not Out of Africa. You know, that's not a really good story. Um, and yeah, nobody, would, the, out of Africa wasn't on the required reading list when I was a kid. Uh, why was this piece of shit on it? Um, and that's all it was, it was a piece of shit. It doesn't make, it had comp insane plot flaws. Like somebody lives this life where in one day they do all of these adventures and they call people at four in the morning and <laughs> all this other bullshit. Um, you know, elevator operators that were pimps, right? The elevator operator was a pimp in a, in a swanky hotel. Like, that would ever happen. You know, at minimum, the elevator operator might give you a connection. You know, call this number, and he might get some cut for directing some traffic. You know, say Joe sent you. But he'd never be the actual pimp who beats up the customers in the motel. That could never happen. You know, it's not a real thing. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. So, that, I mean, it's just, it's just a stupid little silly... It's, the guy, all he did was write short stories. It was just a long, short story. It was a trivial little story. Trivial. I, I mean, even my, my incredibly boring adolescence... Had, had moments of the, that were just so much more sexually interesting than this crap. I mean, it was crap. Um, yeah. So anyway, the guy says, you, you mad, says. So, so of course, the guy who calls himself, you mad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just amazing. Uh, you troll, is what it is. Um, Catcher in the Rye is a wonderful book. It's a pamphlet. Uh, a real masterpiece. Of what? Description of furniture. 
trivial, superficial descriptions of other human beings as just characters. Well, the black guy was black, and the nerdy guy was nerdy, and the tall guy was awkward, and the pretty guy was uh, vain. Oh, gee, and let's spend chapters of that. Let's do that for chapters. You know, just just defining atmospheric cliches. The road was all full of little bumpy asphalt. <laughs> you know, with bird poo on it. Just go on and on and on about how not perfectly round the melons were. I mean, there wasn't even a, you know, and it, to, to, to boot, there's just nothing else in it. I mean, there's not even a fucking nipple. Uh, you know, I mean, it's about some sort of teenage angst, and there isn't even, there isn't even a pubic hair. <laughs> you know, it's nothing. Um, all right, anyway, a wonderful book. A real masterpiece. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, any 15-year-old could write. Um, just because you didn't have the brains to comprehend its meaning, so there was meaning somewhere in it, in a bunch of contrived and and, and completely phony uh, situations, a completely made-up narrative of bullshit that couldn't possibly happen. A guy afraid of fights who gets in three fights in one night. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you know... A 17-year-old who has years of experience going to clubs and drinking. Yeah, sure. Um, you don't have the brains to comprehend its meaning doesn't mean it's... A guy who hung out with a girl and played checkers, golf, and I don't know, swimming. Yeah, swimming. Did that with a chick, right? <laughs> and uh, doesn't have any... Uh, a chick that's that's that he thinks of as being hot enough to to have sex with, and yet he didn't occur to him in all of those situations he was with that girl. Sure, that could happen. No. <sighs> all right. Um, brains to comprehend its meaning doesn't mean it's a bad piece of literature. Well, it doesn't. It's not. You know. Compared to what? Not even close to anything Shakespearean, and certainly not even close to any of the other novels I read. Like, you know, even the old ones, like Moby Dick or something, where there was so much more um, potential, first, in the sense you had these interesting, the whole psychology of people wasn't just a fucking whitewash of their psychology. Um, the characters were deep. Uh, and interesting, not trivial, and just, you know, he has crooked teeth, <laughs> you know, or maybe you just have shit taste because you don't read anything. Well, I've read plenty, but, and um, I remember this book as being one of the worst pieces of tedious nonsense to read because it was so, uh, you know, you almost forgot you were reading because it was just, oh, is he still talking about the desk? You know, is he talking about a four-legged chair in the corner or something? Is he describing the, you know, some other completely uninteresting piece of shit? Um, anyway, you don't read anything. After all, it isn't, after all, isn't it the case that your literary ceiling is National Geographic? Laughing my ass off. So again, I mean, because you just point out that you happen to be educated by a reasonably decent magazine about geology, science, and the um, cultures of the world, that um, that's what you read as entertainment. That was your literature. I mean, you don't even understand that National Geographic wasn't trying to be literary. It was an educational magazine. You really don't understand the difference between those two things. Oh, you're really dumb. Uh, but you sure love talking shit, and the shit talking is in what form besides just an explanation of why my brain wasn't impressed. Um, all bark though, no bite. In what sense? Uh, you say so. I'm wrong. Because you say so. Because it's a masterpiece. Because it's full of incredibly interesting 
stuff. It, you know, it was great porn. You know, it was the shittiest porn I ever read. Uh, just like your physics theory. So again, you, another guy who's puts up nothing, but um, will you know you'll be shown for what you are in the end, an asshole. <laughs> yeah, because I'm right and you're full of shit, and you got nothing. Um, so Long Cat did say you mad. It's a horribly pretentious read. I don't even know if the read is pretentious. It's just so hypocritical. This is sitting there pointing out how everybody else is a phony in his phony dialogue, you know. Um, that's just as fake. His, his own, you know, it, it almost made a mockery of things like, um, um, you know, everybody has that feeling at points in their life where I just want to get away, you know, just buy a motorcycle and hit the road and fuck all this attachment to this shit, you know. And I imagine a lot of people have those moments, just like the moment where they feel like jumping off the building, you know, or driving off the bridge, <laughs> you know, you have those thoughts. But you know they're, they're not things you're really going to act on. Um, you, you know there's too many practical limitations. And I think in the book, the, what, the 12-year-old points that out to him or something. <laughs> you know, I mean, he couldn't reason that for himself. Uh, anyway, it was just such bullshit. Um, anyway, so let's see. Uh, you Mad says, there's absolutely nothing pretentious about it. You are just another person who missed its point entirely. Yes, uh, the point was elusive, I have to admit. I couldn't, couldn't find one in there at all from my perspective. It all just seemed like an, a complete bow, uh, a, a complete cop-out to just becoming one of them. It was just a how to become a Borgite. You know, don't recognize that there's something fundamentally wrong with your brother dying. No, instead, just learn to be an acceptor and a, a play-alonger. And don't mind that your little sister is going to just turn into another one of the robots. <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, oh yeah. Um, so what was the point? No, I mean, besides wanting to blow your brains out, what good is the book? It's a good book to make suicide to. Because in some sense, it just points out how it's all shit. Incredible shit. The relationships with other people are all shit. Everybody's, everybody wants something. Everybody wants to rub your hair or something. They want to come in your face. It's, it's always something that somebody is taking. And there's nothing genuine or real about any of our interactions um, besides these fake words. That's the funniest part. We can talk a better game than we're capable of playing and yet these fuckers will degrade the value of those conversations. Shit. So anyway, um, so Ron Johnson, who's usually not a complete idiot, uh, if you looked at the book in a slightly different light, <laughs> I just don't know how a light is going to fix a book about, you know, a tedious description of a drunk's night out. I mean, what, what about this, you know, where you just, I felt like, I felt like, I felt like, then I felt like, and then I felt like. Do you ever do things because you just spontaneous feel like? I mean, that doesn't even make any sense. Anyway, your description of the book portrays a portrait of you. Good. I, I you know, I, I would, <laughs> you know, a portrait of anything has to be better than the portrait the book paints. Because the portrait painted by the book is, is nothing. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a watercolor painting of a story. It's all blendy and mushy and there's just, there's not a hooter to be found <laughs> that looks right. I mean, there's nothing in it that was rockable. Nothing. Just a bunch of nonsensical crap. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I yeah, I, I, I decided to pay the guy to, you know, send a hooker to my room. <laughs> and then when she got there, I wasn't in the mood. What kind of crap is that? 
I mean, it doesn't. Is that how it would work for you? Go to pay anyway? Well, then I'd have at least I'd have her get naked and spin around or do some kind of shit, something memorable. <laughs> you know, I, I obviously I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have contracted and then I'd um, gladly and and, and um, with some glee satisfied the contract. Anyway, this is stupid book. Anyway. So yeah, that's probably enough. I mean, that's the only, I don't think there was too many of those. There was a few of them, though. You're just, you're just saying, what the fuck is wrong with people? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a paperback book. It's a, it's, it's not even a good short story. I mean, do you really buy this thing where, okay, I had this great younger brother, and he wrote poems on his baseball mitt? First, I mean, if you ever, you can't write too much on a baseball mitt. I mean, the leather really doesn't let you write really small, that you, and you can't read it, and it's going to get all, you know, fucked up. But let's say you could write a few lines of something. How the, how the hell, your, your brother was supposed to be really smart, and he, he had to write poems on his baseball mitt to save him from being bored. And you're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what sense does that make? I mean, you're going to have them memorized in, you know, no time at all. So what do you need to even look at them anymore for? I mean, it's it's just fundamentally retarded. Like I said, I, I don't even buy that you could read it. it just, it's just such a, it's just such a plot flaw as a, as a defining thing about a human being is to say something that's stupid about them. Well, they were stupid enough to write poetry in a baseball mitt. I bet if you went on planet Earth and collected all the baseball mitts that exist, none of them have poetry written in them. Come on. I mean, except something like, you know, wham, bam, I sure fucked that ma'am, or something like that, but that, that doesn't qualify as poetry. I mean... Too weird, too stupid, too fucking. You're from goddamn Pluto or something. If you if you understand the Catcher in the Rye, even the title, anything about the whole fucking goddamn stupid narrative, yeah, you're from Pluto. It's, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's crap. It's a crap. It's crap. I mean, I've read Chinese instructional manuals that are more entertaining. Truth. A fun, a more fun read. All right. Oh, so if you have faith chimed in, oh, here we go. Oh, fuck the word friction. Okay, catcher in the rye means to save children from losing their innocence. Okay. So that had something to do with, I guess it was something about running off cliffs and he was going to catch children before they f ran off the cliff or something, or some metaphor like that. They thought the song Catcher in the Rye or what is the real, I don't know what the song is. Some little ditty, ditty, some little ditty. <laughs> you know, which is, that in itself was pretty gay. That's his favorite song, or whatever it was. When Phoebe, I don't know if that's her name, Phoebe is riding the carousel, she reaches for the ring. It represents maturing. Uh, Phoebe is the symbol of youth and innocence, and she is reaching for maturity. Well, she's a horrible symbol of that. Because there was nothing about that character that was, a, she was like an old wise woman. She wasn't at all a child in most of what she represented to him. She was like his, anal uh, you know, his, his analyst. You know, it was like he needed her to keep him from being a child. Anyway, Phoebe represents the innocence of youth that Holden is trying to preserve. I don't know what he was trying to do. You're saying he was uh, actually trying to preserve some part of youth when all he had was a bunch of cynicism, you know, uh, you know, built out of the fact of his own sense of, I've got the answers and they're all idiots. Anyway, pile of shit, sorry. 
No sale. All right. Anyway, this was a bunch. Of, this was an add-on that wasn't even necessary. Not even close to necessary. But I do pity the mystic. I can just imagine him trying to listen to that book. It just must have been horrible because it was all this. It was, I, it was all that kind of narrative where you know it's all conversational, right? I, I'm, you know, I mean, it's just writing conversations, and they were just stupid conversations, from what I remember. Anyway, yeah. So, till next time.